Hey guys, Dr. Brad Bodle here, and thanks so much for joining me. Now, something that caught my eye the other day was a doctor online who was recommending that people spend at least three hours outdoors every week. And that got me thinking, how crazy is it that we went from a species that basically spent all of our time outdoors to now where some people barely spend any time outdoors? And when I'm trying to assess things that have changed and potentially contributed to the worsening of our health, both as individuals and as a society, I think one of those key factors is disruptions in our sleep, changes in circadian biology, and all of this tends to stem from changes in light exposure. So today I wanted to look at some of these alterations in circadian rhythm talk about how it interacts and impacts our thyroid function, and also go over some of the strategies that I use with my patients to help them improve in these areas. But before we get started, if you've been following along with the content, thanks so much for coming back. And if you're new here, please remember to like and subscribe. I post videos every Thursday morning on the best natural strategies for supporting Hashimoto's and hypothyroid symptoms, and you don't wanna miss any of the great information. Now to start off, what is a circadian rhythm? Now, a lot of times we think about it in relation to our sleep, which is correct, but it's really any biological process that operates on a 24 hour clock. And this can include things like changes in body temperature, hunger and digestion patterns, and the release of hormones. The way that the body determines when these different processes should kick off is all due to the timing and exposure to light. It's really cool actually. Our retinal cells in our eyes are special types of neurons. And although they do help us to see everything that's in our environment, they also have direct connections to our hypothalamus. Within our hypothalamus, we have a specific area called our suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this is the part that receives that information from our eyes and acts as sort of a master circadian clock regulator. So any of these reoccurring or timed physiological processes are managed through this part of the brain. But if we have disturbances in our light and darkness patterns, then the suprachiasmatic nucleus can be confused and it won't know what time it needs to start these different events. In particular, these patterns can be especially disrupted by artificial lighting at night something that the research shows us has increased by three to 6% annually from 2008 until 2018. And that's a pattern that is expected to worsen as artificial lighting at night is becoming longer in duration and also more intense. But why is this a problem? Is it really that big a deal if we're staying up a little bit later, having the lights on and watching some TV, getting some extra work done or reading? Well, actually, it is a big deal and the consequences can be significant. Chronic abnormalities in our circadian rhythm can lead to the development of metabolic disorders such as hypertension, dyslipidemia, dysglycemia, abdominal obesity, and increased levels of inflammation. And as we go through that list, you might be saying to yourself, this kind of sounds familiar to me. And that's because changes in thyroid function can have very similar effects on our overall health and metabolism. Now, something that I talk to my patients about a lot is when we're dealing with some sort of specific symptom or we have some sort of health condition that we're trying to manage, we don't wanna do things that highlights or exacerbates those areas of weakness. Instead, we wanna make sure we're doing things actively to support those areas. And the problem with these changes in light exposure and changes in circadian rhythm is it tends to stack a lot of the stressors or problem areas that we're already having with our thyroid onto one another. This can then worsen our symptoms and create this sort of negative feedback loop where one problem begets another and it makes it very difficult for us to get out of this cycle. The other thing that we wanna consider when it comes to these abnormalities in light exposure is whenever we're trying to make changes or improvements in our health, we always wanna focus on the things that are going to have the maximum outcomes for us. So if we are going to put effort into doing something differently, we want it to have a positive result in terms of how we feel and how we function. 
Sometimes in the natural health world, I think people can get bogged down by trying to do too many things, and some of those things just don't move the needle very much for us. And when we combine a lot of stuff and a lot of effort for not much change, then it's really easy to get overwhelmed and discouraged and end up throwing everything out. But the nice thing about working on light exposure is the changes are relatively easy and it can lead to some big differences in how we feel. So when we check into the research, what does it suggest we do to help improve our circadian rhythm? Take some of that stress and inflammation off of our thyroid and help our physiology to work better. Well, something that you'll see come up again and again is that we wanna use a multimodal approach where we have timed exposure to light, we avoid bright light at inappropriate times, and we adhere to scheduled sleep and wake timings. Now, all of that sounds nice, but what does it actually look like in practice? And for me, there's a few different areas that I like my patients to focus on and a few changes that I like them to make. The first recommendation is something that is pretty easy for some people and pretty tough for others. And it is not using our phones two hours prior to going to sleep and not using it in that first hour after we wake up. The biggest contributor to artificial light at night and the biggest change in the last 20 years is the use of our personal devices. And too many people are getting high dosage artificial light when their brain should be relaxing, winding down, and getting ready for sleep. Instead, the light from our phones is sending the exact opposite signal to our brains. And at a time when melatonin levels should be rising, this exposure to light suppresses that melatonin release, impacting our ability to get to sleep and therefore changing our overall rhythm. Not only that, but usually when we're on our phones, we're doing activities that don't teach our brain to be calm, relax, and prepare for sleep. It's very common that my patients say to me, you know, I try to go to sleep, but as soon as I lay down, I have a million different things going through my mind. And while that might be true, using apps that teach us to have an attention span of two to three seconds and are constantly stimulating us with something different, well, it's no wonder that our brain is going in a million different directions when that's the type of input that we're always providing it. So that's number one. You wanna make the biggest, quickest change? Get rid of the phone at night. Number two is, if we do need to be around screens or we're in an area with a lot of lighting, then it might not be a bad idea to use some blue light blocking glasses. And they can look like this or like this. Now I've said before that there's a lot of companies out there that will try to sell you fancy and expensive blue light blockers. But as long as the glasses appear more of an orange or reddish color to you, then we know that those blue and violet and higher frequency wavelengths are being dispersed. In a similar way, that's why the ocean appears blue to us. I guess not similar, the principle is similar, but we're seeing a different color. But the reason why we see the ocean as blue is because water scatters and disperses lower frequency wavelengths, such as our reds, oranges, and yellows. So when those color frequencies get scattered, we only see blue. So with our glasses, if we see them as orange or red, then we know that the blue light is being dispersed. Yes, your phone does have a blue light dimmer, but it usually isn't as potent as we'd like it to be. An easy way to tell if your glasses are working is putting them on, and then viewing something that's blue on your phone. Even with the blue light dimmer on, you'll notice a significant decrease in the visibility of that text, and therefore, you'll know your glasses are doing their job. I like my patients to be using their blue light blockers after sunset, and as I said before, especially if you're gonna be interacting with devices. My third recommendation is to schedule a consistent time to wake up. Now, it's not unusual for people to have a particular bedtime. But if we're having a difficult time falling asleep because our circadian rhythm is disrupted, then even if we want to go to sleep, sometimes we're not able to do it. Instead, scheduling a wake-up time, even though it can be hard in the beginning and even though it might sacrifice some of our hours of sleep, it's something under our direct control. And if we stick with that pattern for a few days or weeks, then eventually, that timing is going to key those areas of our brain that are associated with our rhythm, which will then cause our nighttime sleep routine to fall into place. 
Even better is to have that wake up time coincide with the sunrise, but for most people, it isn't an option for us. But it is something you can think about if you have the flexibility. And finally, my last recommendation takes us back to the initial point of this video, which is get outside. Now, would it be great to get that 15 to 30 minutes of daylight in the morning when the sun is rising? Absolutely. But again, some of us don't have the ability to do that. But the cool thing is, I don't know if you know this, but our brain is pretty dang smart. And no matter what time we're outside, based on the angle of the sun and the intensity of light, our brain can interpret that and still use it to help regulate our circadian rhythm. The problem is, as we said, some people aren't spending any time outside and they're never getting that opportunity to reset that internal clock. So whether it's in the morning, midday, evening time, or on the weekends, make the most of your opportunities. It's fast, it's free, and it's fun. And the simple act of getting outside is going to have these massive, massive implications for your health. So if you're not doing it already, what are you waiting for? But as tech continues to become more and more a part of our lives, it's something that I think of very similarly to nutrition. Are there advances to be made? Yes. And can they be helpful to us? Absolutely. However, we also need to be aware that there will be drawbacks and we want to be proactive in the way that we take care of ourselves and we don't allow those things to overwhelm our systems in a way that negatively impacts our symptoms and how we feel. But let me know what you think in the comments below and feel free to share if there's anything you've done that has really helped out your sleep and circadian biology that I didn't mention in the video. Of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them for me down there as well. If you like this information, but know that you need more help and would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, then you can start that process by sending an email to contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com. Once we hear from you, my staff will reach out to see if you qualify for a free consultation where you and I get to sit down, go over your health, figure out what your goals are, and see if we're a good fit to work together. If you'd rather start off by making some changes on your own, make sure to grab either one of my free downloads linked in the description box, or check out any of the other topics on my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook, where I post daily information, strategies, and tips, and those are linked for you below as well. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the comments and questions. I hope that this information is continuing to serve you and that you're having a lot of success with your health. But my name is Dr. Brad Bodel. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next one.